Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Keepingitfree.blogspot.com, a free site. Today is Thursday, May the 7th, 2020. I know today has been a huge day for Bitcoin. No question about it. Um, Longtime subscribers know I'm very bullish on cryptocurrency. Right, as I like to say, Bitcoin, gold, dash, and silver. Right, just shorthand. But what I want people to do, especially millennials, who seem to recognize me when I'm walking around. People my age don't know I'm on YouTube. Millennials seem to. What I want millennials to do is to think of the future. Right, understand, the present is real bright. Cryptocurrency is going to take you places that are surprising, right? Bitcoin is the bellwether. That's the main cryptocurrency, right? I personally prefer Dash. I believe either is going to do a lot of things for you. But I want you to think about what's coming down the road. And I need for you to be smarter than my generation, right? My generation has some bad habits, central banks, believing in fiat currency, believing in politicians, right? Linking money to sanctions. What I want millennials to do is to lose the old paradigm, right? You see that in the remake of the movie Superfly, where the guys who are making money are selling drugs on the street and they're showing up flashing a lot of cash at the club and stuff like that. Imagine how different that movie would have been if the leader of the Snow Patrol, right, some drug dealing outfit that all wears white and thinks they're going to evade police. Instead of the leader of the Soul Patrol, the Snow Patrol, saying, I got to eat, right, and then, you know, talking about drugs. Imagine if he instead said, I got to eat, and someone next to him said, you know, that's why we need to think about investments, right? Not the drug game, but stuff that's out of favor that we know is going to explode. Like silver, copper, right? Just imagine if that would have happened. Imagine if when the cops showed up, the bad guys didn't have to pay off the cops. Imagine if the cops were already working for them because the bad guys were legitimate investors making money off capital gains and passive income. That's what I want this new generation to think about. Right, so, you know Bitcoin's a winner, right? It's soon going to cross 10,000, right? I imagine there'll be some retracements, but it's soon going to go well above 10,000 in my opinion, right? Let me just say this, precious metals, gold and silver, are also going to be winners. Somehow silver is below $16 an ounce. Silver is going to be a bigger winner than gold, in my opinion. Right? My point to you is to look at things that aren't the flavor of the month. Right? Right now everyone's flocking into Bitcoin. People are ignoring silver. I'm just telling you silver is going to make significant money. The gold-silver ratio has never been greater, right? If you want to see real gangsters, don't look at the drug dealers running around town. That's low level. Look at the investors copying cash. Imagine how different Superfly would have been if instead the young guys at the club had invested in Bitcoin when it was selling for less than $1,000 a coin. Well, let's talk about crypto. I know they're Bitcoin maximalists. I've referred to them in earlier videos, right? Understand, crypto is an ecosystem. You have centralized exchanges. Now you have the emergence of decentralized exchanges. That's what I want people to think about. Multiple blockchains and bridging the divide.
chain link right now is below four dollars a coin understand you have synthetics which actually enables you to create right links to real-world assets that's where crypto is going you also have Ripio a crypto that is built on lending crypto to others folks aren't a lot of people around you getting loans right now to pay bills think about the United States for a second right for all of you who believe in v-shaped recoveries just compare what's happening today to the Great Depression understand when Warren Buffett the head of Berkshire Hathaway tells you that he's not buying anything that he sold his airlines when Sam Zell a real estate investors real estate investor and you need to know the names tells you that he's not buying anything right let's go back to Buffett for a moment Buffett's sitting on more than hundred and thirty billion dollars worth of cash Buffett can buy companies with cash he's not that should tell you that some seasoned people in the game believe the market is going to go lower. Right? Howard Marks, the distressed debt investor, put it best. He said, look, the market is only down 15%. The world is more messed up than that. So you've got to be thinking in terms of investments today that are going to do well tomorrow right I'm just gonna name some concepts I want you to think about them you want to talk about a huge cash hoard you want to talk about having a toe in things like cloud computing while dominating retail right understand while the world was dealing with the coronavirus and cutting payroll think about the millions of new unemployed Amazon was actually hiring workers. Here's what I found. By the thousands. Right? Amazon so all over the place that you just heard one of my Amazon units here in the background. Think about driverless cars. Now I'm just telling you what I'm doing. This isn't financial advice. What I want you to do is to think for yourself. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Think about driverless cars. Think about Waymo. Right, understand that's just part of alphabet. Right, the search engine, the YouTube TV, YouTube, this format, uh, Chromecast, artificial intelligence. Right, my point to you is big tech, Amazon, alphabet, they're going to be doing better than you think. Here's what I found. <laughs> Let me also say this too. As bandwidth grows, right, whole industries grow. You have 5G. Now, 5G has been delayed a little bit because people aren't flocking out there to buy 5G compatible phones. 5G is going to be all over the United States in 18 months. All over the United States. So what I want people to do is to look at the deals that Ericsson is doing in furtherance of helping build 5G networks in China. Right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to Google 5G companies. If you're really savvy, think about the real estate rates that the 5G towers have to be built on, right? Because you need a lot of 5G towers, especially in dense urban areas. Let's go one step further in terms of talking about China. Now, I, I'm as patriotic as they come. Understand, I love my freedom. Love it. I don't want some social capital system here in the United States like they have in China. But what I want you to do is to look at the demographics 
China has more people using the internet than there are people in the United States. Right? You need to research WeChat. You need to figure out how the Chinese are ahead of the Americans right now in fintech. Right? I believe you're committing malpractice if you don't think of the big growing tech companies in China. Right? Alibaba is really the Chinese equivalent of Amazon. They're growing by leaps and bounds. They're even into cloud computing, like Amazon is into cloud computing. Right? JD.com is another huge Chinese online retailer. Tencent. You need to know about them. Right? They're huge. They're getting bigger and bigger. Understand, Tencent is involved in WeChat. That's how you pay for things in China. I'm even experimenting with NEO. Now understand, this is a speculative play. But if you know that electric vehicles are taking off, if you see the growth of Tesla in Northern California and in China, where they now have a factory, and if you realize that NEO manufactures electric vehicles, that NEO is getting the help of the Chinese government, that electric vehicles have a positive environmental effect, right? China has a pollution problem. Also, strategically, you want to make sure your transportation system is efficient. It's modern. So I believe NEO is going to be favored. I know there's a glut of automobiles all over the world. I understand that you're going to have a tsunami of cars going up for auction, cars that couldn't be sold. I know that people struggling with recent unemployment, people who've been locked down, aren't out in car showrooms looking at cars. I get all that. But understand, you have to be 18 months to 24 months ahead of where things are. If you sense that there is a vibrant demand for electric vehicles, right, that all these German car makers are getting into electric vehicles, if you understand that China is a huge market and that NEO at less than $4 a share right now is favored by the Chinese government, then why not speculate? Right? Understand, there are investments where you look at the numbers and you're figuring things out. And then there's speculation where you're just looking at the macro picture, the world view. And you're thinking, you know what? At $4 a share, if this company takes off, I want to be with them. Let's go one step further. You know, oil has cratered. We all know that. You go to the gas station and you're going to see... Even in California here, the price for a gallon of gas is less than $3 a gallon, right? We understand the futures contracts were upside down last month. Okay, you're kidding yourself. You're absolutely kidding yourself if you think oil is not going to bounce back. Just stick your head out the window, look at the roads, look at the infrastructure for things like gasoline-fueled cars, you understand that oil is necessary. There are some who are speculating that Saudi Arabia and Russia were trying to shut down the American shale oil industry. That's why they didn't agree on a supply cutback. And you had really a man-made crisis in oil. Well, let me tell you, I was just looking at my investment portfolio was not planning on buying any stock. Was just doing a little inventory and I noticed that Exxon was below $40 a share. Right? Understand, Exxon is one of these dividend aristocrats. Exxon always pays a dividend. That increases your payout. Understand, too, that the idea of Exxon being below $40 a share, by the way, I missed the bottom of the market. If you look at the chart, you'll see it was down around $30 a share. 
right? I got it below $40 a share. It's already reinflated to $44 a share. Now, my point to you is when this depression first hit, and I know no one's using the D word, it's a depression. Use your head. Just look at the number of unemployed people there are. Just look at the size of the government bailouts. Just look at what they're giving Wall Street. Just look at the people who are asking for bailouts. Look at the bankruptcies. Neiman Marcus, Lord & Taylor, even the high end is getting hit. At the start of this depression, there was a panic. Right? Let's face it, too, just from a PR perspective, oil isn't really viewed as a cash cow right now in financial circles. Well, that's when you get bargains, folks. Exxon has been around forever. Right? Well before when I was born, Exxon refines oil, just the infrastructure, just the brand name. Just the dividend history, Google, Exxon dividend history, should have you excited about the idea of getting Exxon here. Right? Again, I'm not giving investment advice, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Right? The demand for oil isn't going away. Not only that, they've told you that there's an agreement to cut back on the supply of oil. You had a glut a month ago. That's been addressed. So use this time to pick up bargains for goods and services that you know will be in demand in the future. I know many people view recessions and depressions as awful times. Those are also the best times to find bargains. Google the background of John Templeton. You'll find out that in the Depression, when people were panicked, when stocks were flat, he was going around buying up stocks. Made him a multimillionaire. Right, so my advice to millennials who fall in love with the urban folklore of movies like Superfly, and hey, I enjoyed the movie, preferred the original, but I enjoyed this movie. Right, just to understand that the biggest gangsters in the world are the people getting capital gains, are the people getting passive income, are the people who can spot new industries. Think about it. Legally, you buy a crypto, as many have. And it goes up 5x, it goes up 10x. Until they sell that crypto, according to the IRS, they have not made any money. They are untaxed. Right? Joe Neighbor and his wife are out working as W 2 employees someplace. The wages they get are taxed. The first group has made money hand over fist. They could even be audited. As long as they don't realize the capital gains, they aren't getting taxed on the money. Let's go one step further. Let's say I bought crypto, I bought Bitcoin in a thousand, let's say, right? And keep in mind, even a thousand is much later in the game than many people got in. It took Bitcoin a while to get to a thousand, <laughs> right? Well, let's say I'm late to the party and I bought Bitcoin at a thousand. Let's say Bitcoin conservatively is $9,500 today, right? So let's say that I've made $8,500 at least on paper in terms of my net worth, right? Just to understand, and again, this is what level of player are you, right? Understand that savvy players, they tend to be wealthier, right? They'll borrow against the $8,500 of appreciation that they've gotten, right? They'll borrow against it. Guess what? Because they're borrowing against themselves, they're going to owe themselves the money, right? You know... You go to a bank, you borrow the $8,500. Well, 
right? Keep in mind, the crypto itself is worth $9,500. Guess what? That's not a taxable transaction. With the money you borrowed, if you're really savvy, you could use that money to invest in other income-producing assets. You still haven't made any money according to the IRS. Now contrast that with the W-2 employee. Right? They're earning a salary. They're getting taxed on everything. They sell a portion of their 401k. They're getting taxed with penalties. So how you structure everything matters. Right? Let me just say, Bitcoin is up big. It's going to continue to ramp, in my opinion. Right? Don't believe me. Google Raul Paul, the head of Real Vision, the founder of Real Vision, his thoughts on Bitcoin. Right? I think Bitcoin is going to continue to go up. But that's not enough. It's never enough. Right? While the world is sleeping on gold and silver, right? I know girl, uh, gold's at all time highs in some currencies, not the US dollar. Right? Gold's been higher than it is here. Right? My point to you is now's the time to look at gold miners, to look at silver miners. Right? While the world is over here looking at crypto and the Bitcoin happening, right? you already have your toe in that water. You need to be over here looking at China, looking at Tencent, looking at Alibaba, looking at JD.com. Right? Looking at how China is building out their 5G network. Looking at Ericsson. Right? In the gold space, you don't want to just be in bed with miners. That's very risky. You want diversified companies. Guess what? You have gold mining royalty companies. You want to look at them. You want to do your research. So you're not some fool at the club selling drugs, putting your personal freedom at risk of arrest. You're actually some guy getting capital gains who can survive an audit, who when he sees the cops, he knows. He doesn't have to bribe the cops. The cops are already working for him because he owns equities. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Maybe we're not at the stage yet in life where we can have a movie called Superfly and it's about a bunch of nerdy guys studying charts and markets in international economies. <laughs> Maybe we're not there. Maybe Superfly would have been boring. If a guy's at the club getting bottle service based on capital gains, he's received from stocks he bought before they went up 10x. Right? Let me just say too, you're looking for ecosystems. 5G is an entire ecosystem. Has anyone figured out that driverless cars are going to need a lot of 5G bandwidth? Has anyone figured out that the technology used by driverless cars, LIDAR and stuff like that, actually have companies producing the technology. Right? Think it through. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me just say too, I know offline people ask me about cryptos and stuff like that. Um, my favorite stash, obviously Bitcoin to me is excellent. I'm also looking at decentralized currencies. Well, let me say this. I believe privacy is going to be key. So Monero, Horizon, PIVX, 
Daps. I like those coins. Right? I like the coins that bridge blockchains. So Chainlink, which by the way, in terms of market cap, is a top 20 coin and is available on Binance.us. Understand too, Binance.us has jumped the fence. It's now completely legal. So you can register with them and you can actually buy Chainlink using a debit card. I am not kidding. In the United States. Right? I like Chainlink. Um, those are the ones. I like Synthetics. Right? Those are the ones that come to mind right now. Um, I have a site that I just use for ideas. It automatically updates. It's digitalassetlife.blogspot.com. Um, again, I believe that's digitalassetlife.blogspot.com. I would encourage people to give that a look. I also um, post uh, links to um, some coin market cap, other cryptos on keepingitfree.blogspot.com and wealthspinning.blogspot.com. Give that a look. As I've said, you're in a room, you're looking for the players, right? I'm just telling you, you're not going to find a more robust, determined group than the crypto community, which is international by nature because these cryptos cross borders. And the group investing in new technologies, as well as the group that's aware of what's going on in China. I hope you give all of that a look. Thanks for stopping by.